Welcome to PwC IFRS Talks, your source of all things IFRS. I'm your host, Andrew Pride, and today my guest is Mark Randall, our Banking and Financial Instruments Technical Accounting Specialist. Mark's going to tell us about green loans and I bet you can't wait. So welcome, Mark. Can I start with the very basic question? Uh, what is a green loan? Andrew, great to be here. Um, thanks for having me. Uh, what is a green loan? I guess a green loan can be a multitude of things. It can be a loan which is intended um, to fund a particular project, which is green, or I guess in the sense that we're going to be talking about green loans in this podcast. It's also a term that can be used to refer to a loan where the interest rate on that loan varies dependent on some green or ESG metric of the borrower. And those loans are sometimes also called sustainability linked loans. But it's it's that interest variation that's dependent on that green metric or that ESG metric that is really the key feature. So there's been a lot about green stuff in the in the press recently, and green loans are part of that, I guess. But who issues these green loans and what's driving them to issue them? Sure. I, I guess as with any loan, there's sort of two parties involved, the lender and the borrower. And I guess kind of on both sides, there, there's the dynamic in the market with the focus on climate change uh, and driving the right behaviours that kind of borrowers, often kind of corporate entities, are keen to have these types of clauses in their loans so they can demonstrate they're taking climate change seriously. And I think the same is very much true uh, of the banks on, on the, who are predominantly on the lending side. A number of them will have targets about the level of issuance of these sustainability linked uh, loans that, that they will issue. And I think that's seen as being part of the solution in terms of the finance sector helping, uh, helping the broader economy and society in terms of helping on, on climate change and ESG topics. And I think one of the other dynamics is that certainly in the investment management field, um, there's huge growth in investment funds that call themselves green. And many of them are looking for these types of assets um, to put in those funds as well in terms of because there's investor attraction. So I think there's a, there's a number of drivers. But as you said, it's kind of the zeitgeist and the, the focus of the market is around all things green. And this very much plays in with that. Okay, interesting. So all these green features, um, all this green variability, I'm imagining that that makes the accounting for them a bit tricky. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here talking about them. Can you tell us a little bit more about that, please? <laughs> of course, yeah. It's slightly self-fulfilling prophecy, isn't it? Um, <laughs> what makes them tricky is if you think back to when IFRS 9 was being developed in the aftermath of the financial crisis, these green these green loans sustainability lit loans this green variability simply wasn't something that was on the radar and so the challenge is looking at the guidance that there is in ifrs 9 around the classification and measurement of these instruments and and sort of navigating your way through and applying that to these these green variability clauses so can you tell me a bit more about the impact about the green features and how that might affect the um, accounting for these loans? Yeah, and, and, and I guess that's the, the $64,000 question. And, and the reason this is important is if you don't pass that SPPI test, then the loan would need to be measured at fair value through profit and loss. So fair value on the balance sheet and those gains and losses from that remeasurement going straight into the income statement, which mm -hmm. if you think about kind of classic accounting, it's better for loans which just talk to, that is really quite a, a difference. So that, that's really why it matters and is getting a lot of attention at the moment. Okay, so is it obvious to a company that it's got a green loan? And if it is or it isn't, what do they need to think about? Yeah, I guess in, in terms of the lenders, they should very much know these features are in there, that they are putting them in, they are putting them in the, in the, in the contracts. I guess in terms of having got over what's the easy hurdle, in, in terms of what they need to think about from an accounting perspective, I guess from various conversations I've had, what's really important to understand when you're doing that accounting analysis is what was the commercial rationale for putting that green variability in the loan? These types of clauses can reference a whole range of, of different metrics, be it CO2 emissions, be it the progress of a particular uh, project to 
uh, improve the sustainability of somebody. It might be water usage, it might be board diversity, that there's a there's a whole range of these things. And so really understanding the commercial rationale for including those specific ones in that particular loan to that particular borrower and what the, what the thinking behind that is really important because without that you kind of you can't really pass go in terms of then trying to assess that clause and, and the variability under what guidance there is in IFRS 9. So I imagine that um, interest in green loans and the number of, of loans with green features is just really going to continue to grow over the future. Um, what sort of future developments could we look forward to in this space? Yeah, it, it, like I said, it's very much a, a hot topic at the moment with a lot of industry focus. I think the, the, the key future development to look out for is the ISB, that the standard setter are currently in the midst of their post-implementation review of IFRS 9. So kind of three, three, almost four years in, taking stock of is, is it doing what was intended? And actually they themselves call out in one of their specific questions the green or sustainability link link loans and i guess that there's a, a number of facets to that they, they're, they're really keen to understand the types of clauses that are, that are out there it's so like i said that they can be many and varied and then they're also interested in understanding um how people are analyzing them at the moment because one of their concerns more broadly in the post implementation review is diversity in practice and, and that leading to different outcomes so that that that's their key questions in there okay great so you've got to understand why you've issued these loans um but then what what sort of things do you think we need to be companies need to be thinking about when they're doing that analysis yeah i, I guess there's there's two things i'd flag one around a concept called de minimis and the other around linkage to credit risk so picking up the first one there around de minimis, what, what the literature we have got says is that if a feature could only ever have a de minimis, like really, really small impact, um, then that can be disregarded um, from when you're doing your SPPI analysis. And really, I guess that's the saying, like, it, it's not going to make a difference. You can pass it aside. Exactly. Yes. And so if these features are only having a de minimis impact on cash flows, uh, and some of them can have an extremely small impact, then you could conclude then. But I, I, I do think that there's a key point here around that conclusion if you're making it around de minimis and other um, communications you might be making in your corporate reporting or in, in the UK, in what we call the front half or your MDNA, yeah. because if that's saying lots about these sustainability linked loans that clearly implies is not de minimis, then there's clearly that there's, clear, there's clearly a consistency issue there and actually sure. kind of more broadly regulators are very focused on on front halves and so-called greenwashing um, and being fair and balanced so I think that's a really important consideration there. Okay so if you um, are going to save the world with this loan you'd expect it to have more than a de minimis impact on the cash flows is that what you're saying? I think that is a very good summary yes. Okay, and, so and the then, next one <laughs> exactly so if, if you're if you're not then able to conclude it's de minimis then the other way within the existing literature um that we see you be able to get to that um spbi conclusion is to say that there is linkage between those green that green variability and credit risk and mm -hmm. that when those metrics change the in the, the change which might be an increase or a decrease in the interest rate that they trigger that change is commensurate with the change in the credit risk and really what that builds upon is guidance in which is in IFRS 9 that talks about something called a credit ratchet which says that sort of if kind of that can pass SPPI if the interest rate goes up when the credit risk increases and that increase in the rate is again sort of commensurate and, and, and sensible in the context of the the increased credit risk that's got there now that very much gets you into what's a very kind of emerging topic at the moment in terms of what kind of what do we think how do we think about that that credit linkage what sort of evidence might you look for um to to, to demonstrate that there is that linkage but i guess i would also say when we when we've discussed this area and going back to that that concept of the change being commensurate 
the way we think about it, if the change is less than the amount that will be commensurate, then that too can be consistent with SPPI. The real issue would be is if the extent of the change was more than the amount that will be commensurate, because IFRS 9 is very clear that kind of having changes that are more than what you'd expect, so-called leverage, that that, mm. that that fails as that fails as ppi so so that that's that's the area but i'm not going to pretend that, that that's not a, a complex judgment to make around the, the credit risk piece so like i say that that's very much a, an area of focus at the moment but what i would say is that where banks are issuing or lending these these types of loans or indeed any other uh, entities originating and they've got that asset on the balance sheet and they, they're looking to get it into amortized cost then if the variability could ever be more than de minimis, then really looking at that credit risk piece and making sure there's robust analysis before you do the deal. So you are comfortable with what the, the accounting outcome is going to be. I think that's a really important, that's a really important thing to be looking at. Okay, that's helpful. And what about the borrowers? What do they need to look out for from an accounting perspective? Yeah, in terms of the borrower's accounting, the analysis is different because that SPPI concept I was talking about, that only applies to financial assets. So when you're looking at financial liabilities from the perspective of the borrower, the question you first need to ask yourself is whether this green or sustainability linked feature, whether that's required to be split out as a bifurcated embedded derivative and measured separately at, at fair value through PL. Um, I won't go into all the glorious detail on it, but these features are very often, if not always, um, based on a variable that's specific to one of the parties to the contract, i.e. the borrower, and also the variables are non-financial, so things like CO2 rather than the share price of the borrower. And for that reason, they typically aren't going to qualify or be required to be split out as a bifurcated embedded derivative. So that's how you're not going to account for it. Your next question might well be, well, how would I account for it? Broadly speaking, there's, there's two possible approaches there. The first would apply if the change in the interest rate that the clause is driving is linked to credit risk and, and the amount of the change is commensurate with the changes of the credit risk. And in that case, effectively, the feature is just causing the interest rate to reprice for credit risk. And when that's the case, then like any other sort of normal floating rate um, instrument where the interest rate goes up or down to reflect changes in the market rate of interest, you'd simply account for that as and when that happens. So that's relatively simple. The second of those two possible approaches is more complicated and what it requires you to do unfortunately is to estimate over the life of the instrument what the contractual cash flows including the sustainability link feature what those contractual cash flows will be and more importantly when your estimation of what those future cash flows will be when that estimation changes you map out your new expected cash flows and then discount them back uh, with your uh, effective interest rate and, and the difference you take uh, immediately to profit or loss all in one go so in that second approach you you need to look forward and you have in today's accounting the discounted impact or future expected changes so the impact could be bigger as a result but i think more broadly that the challenge there is um around developing those estimates uh, in the first place and looking forward and, and having that forward view um, but I guess from the perspective of the borrower, if they put a clause into a, a loan based on that, hopefully they've got some decent information on which they can base that estimate if the impact um, could be in any way significant or material. Okay, I imagine that this is only going to grow over time and there will be more green features being added to loans and different green features being added. Um, what could we look forward to in the future in terms of future developments? Yeah, the, the, the key future development, which is sort of um, upon us at the moment and, and ongoing, but will will only kind of give its results in, in the future, is that the, the ISB are doing what's called a post-implementation review of IFRS 9. It's coming up almost to a, it's, its fourth birthday. Uh, and as part of their governance, they kind of do a look back and, and look at new standards and, and, and seek feedback from from various stakeholders to understand is the standard achieving what it was intended to do uh, and if not why not and in particular 
are there divert is there divergent practice that is evolving that sort of thing uh, and, as, and as part of the um what's called the request for information which is the isb's way of kind of getting input they've got a specific kind of panel of spotlighting on these um green or sustainability linked loans where they're asking a number of questions because they want to kind of in particular understand what the range of the clauses that are out there in these contracts as i touched on earlier there can be many and varied and then secondly really wanting to understand how are people in the market thinking about these clauses and analyzing them under the existing SPPI guidance so they can assess whether A, there is divergent interpretation and whether the desired outcomes coming across uh, and also potentially think about whether there's any clarifications they might want to make in the, in the standard or, or other actions. But I mean, there's a lot of road yet to run in terms of that. So whilst the, the, these future developments are going to come, I very much anticipate that certainly for the next year or so, probably long, quite possibly longer, the literature we've got today is what we need to work with. But this, these, um, the post-implementation review is certainly something to track. And I'm sure we'll all learn things uh, that come out from that. Um, I mean, the, the deadline for responding to that is the end of January uh, 2022. And after that, as the, kind of the, the ISB staff will play back to the board what they've heard from that and then decide kind of what they need to do off the back of that so i imagine we'll get probably visibility around that perhaps end of q1 q2 next year so that that's certainly a milestone to watch out for okay and, and we'll be responding to that pir of our first nine i i imagine and i guess anyone who issues a lot of green loans or holds a lot of green loans that have things to say should probably also um think about whether or not it's it's worth responding to that pir yeah, no, very much so. I think it's really important that as many constituents have their have their voices heard around this area. And you talk to five people, you get six different views. It's, it's judgmental. <laughs> then there's different there's different views out there. So I think it's really important and helpful to the ISB that they can be they can be laid on the table. So any any kind and of any decisions are made. Yeah, exactly. With with all the the facts that they're they're disposed. Although kind of as, as you also touched on, I'm sure the market will continue to develop. So I think that kind of looking forward um, piece will also, I'm sure, be, be in their minds. OK, so there's some time to go before that works its way through the process. In the meantime, um, do you have anywhere that you can point people for guidance? For sure, I do. Yes. <laughs> so it just so happens that um, we, we, we had we've had guidance on this topic for the last couple of years. Actually, we have recently just enhanced it, given the focus on this area. So if uh, people search out FAQ 42.41.1, which is entitled Assessing SPPI for Sustainability Linked Loans or Loans with Green Variability. So uh, hopefully that's clearly signposted. Yeah, our, our latest thinking is set out in there. I mean, I've talked through a fair chunk of it, but actually there, what I would flag is there's some areas, particularly around that credit risk piece where we do go into, into some more detail and expand upon that. So if this is a, a live topic for you, uh, have a look at that. That's hopefully helpful. And there's also um, an appendix with I think three or four different examples just to try and bring bring to life some of the concepts we talk about and kind of uh, explain where some of the, the yeses and the noes might be. As ever, I'm sure people's real life examples won't exactly coincide with those with those four examples. It's just try, trying to bring it to life and, and, and give some sense of the things to look out for. Okay. And as they say, the devil's always in the detail for these things as well. Indeed, it is. This, this area, if, 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 if none others, yes. So thank you, Mark, for joining me in this podcast and telling us about green loans. Um, I think you're a second podcast and a little green mini series that I'm doing on IFRS Talks. Um, I, I think it's some interesting things to think about and um, for companies to look into. So with that, I just say thank you for joining me again. Thank you to all our listeners. Stay safe and happy accounting. The preceding program was brought to you by Price Waterhouse Coopers LLP. This content is for general information purposes and is not a substitute for consultation with professional advisors. Mm-hmm.